Today we're going to talk about the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The F-16 is over 40 years old. It's been produced over 4,500 times. It's been featured in films such as Iron Eagle and The Sum of All Fears. Now, on a movie screen, having a pilot strapped into a rocket, shooting across the sky, making maneuvers, trying to intercept a threat, doesn't tell us a whole lot or teach us a whole lot about the F-16. So today, we're going to take a few moments and learn five fast facts about the F-16 Fighting Falcon. First off, its maiden flight was February 2nd of 1974 at Edwards Air Force Base. On January 13th of 1975, it was chosen to be the U.S. Air Force's next air-to-air -air day fighter. It evolved over time due to budget constraints, as well as the need to have an aircraft perform multiple missions. It, eventu it eventually, over time, evolved into the all-weather multi-fighter it's known for today. Number two, it was the first aircraft to be designed to have a first fly-by-wire flight control system to make it more maneuverable. Traditional aircraft, earlier generation, tended to use tension cables, pulleys, counterweights, and other mechanical means in order to make the connection between the pilot's controls and the aircraft's control surfaces. The F-16 was different. In order to make it lighter and more maneuverable, the F-16 had their controls from the pilot, pilot's controls to a flight control computer, sending electrical signals, making multiple calculations in split seconds, sending those calculations to the air control, aircraft's flight control surfaces on a quadru quadruple redundant system. This made the aircraft more maneuverable and a more smoother flight while maintaining its best dogfighter status. Number three, in order to maintain and continue that best dogfighter status, it needed to be highly innovative. This highly innovative design included a few five points right here. Reinforced airframe. The F-16 was able to, was one of the first aircraft to be able to withstand 9G turns, up to the 9Gs. It had a pilot seat that was elevated and set at a 30 degree angle. This allowed the pilot to avoid blacking out during those high G turns. A control stick. The control stick, unlike traditional aircraft, which was center mounted, in the F-16 it's side mounted. This provided the pilot control and a resting area for his arm or her arm in order to better maintain control of the aircraft during these high G turns. It also has a one-piece bubble canopy. It is frameless and it's made of polycarbonate in order to be bird-proof. What this canopy, one-piece bubble canopy did was allow the pilot a better view 360 degrees as well as downward. Number four, EPAF. EPAF stands for European Participating Air Forces. These countries consisted of Belgium, Denmark, Netherlands, and Norway. They were very early, along with the U.S., in ordering the F-16s. They saw the F-16 at the Paris Air Show on June 7, 1975, and combined to order 348 aircraft. Today, the F-16 has served the U.S. as well as 25 other countries. It's been very successful. Number five, the MLU. The MLU stands for Midlife Update. The F-16 began its service life in 1979. It was expected to be replaced by a successor in 1999. Due to economic, economical and political reasons, the F-16's life was extended out to 2010. Today, it's even beyond. In order to maintain the life expectancy, to make sure this aircraft was up to its standards of what it needed to be to continue its role as a multi-fighter. In 1989, a study was begun in order to update the F-16 and make sure it could, could last as long as it needed to be. In 1992, that midlife update began to be implemented across the fleets. 
These updates included cockpit updates, avionic updates, and checking the airframe for stress and fractures and making sure that those fractures were repaired. Though the U.S. has allocated funds to maintain part of its F-16 fleet, it will eventually be replaced by the F-35. This is still a tremendous aircraft that serves countries all around the world and the United States. With companies out there who can help extend the life of the F-16 as well as maintain the obsolete parts and avionics of the F-16, it will continue to serve around the world for years to come.